if anybody needed more proof that this black and brown unity is a farce, pay attention to the story that I'm bringing to you right here. So this woman's name is Laura Gomez, and she is a UCLA professor, and she is advocating that Latinos get reparations too. That's literally how the the uh, phrasing of the title reads. This is UCLA professor Laura Gomez give reparations to Latinos too. First off, we are over here trying to get ours off the ground, and you're talking about some two. I'm trying to figure out what reparations are they trying to get and from whom are they getting them from that's what i'm trying to figure out and i bet you it's gonna be some bs because you know they're probably gonna ask her okay what do you want reparations for exactly let's get into it a book titled inventing latinos a new story of american racism written by university of california los angeles school of law professor laura gomez is advocating for the United States to provide reparations to the Latino community. According to Gomez's website, the main theme of the book, as described from an excerpt from the introduction, is the how and why of Latinx identity becoming a distinctive racial identity. Furthermore, it says this book explains how and why Latinos became cognizable as a racial group, a racial group that is other and inferior to white. It's crazy because a lot of Latinos consider themselves white. In an interview with UCLA, Gomez was asked several questions about the book. In response to one of the questions, Gomez advocates for reparations for Latinos. Thankfully, we're talking a lot more about reparations to African Americans. I think that's a long overdue conversation. How do we repair the damage that racism has done? She said, adding that because of the way that American military government and corporations infiltrated Central America and destroyed the indigenous way of life and slaughtered so many people, people in Central America should get asylum here. Like we had asylum for the Vietnamese, for Cubans, we must allow these folks in. So also oh, you're advocating for illegal immigrants to come in and seek asylum. Huh? Like they did other groups, man, if they listen, if they give them, if they even give them a hint of wanting to do reparations for the, for the Latino community before they do something for us, it's going to be hell to pay. And what's scary about this is look at who just got selected to be president and look at what they, what a huge advocacy of what of them doing is for illegal immigrants. I wouldn't be surprised if they took one look at what she proposes and they agree with what she puts down. Even though black people have been advocating for reparations for the last few years and even bought what we need and what we want and they shut the door in our face every single time and saying, oh, we can't do this, we can't do that because we don't have this and we don't have that. They do have this and they do have that. They just don't want us to have this and that. But I will give this and that to them. And then you got the intersectional crowd. We ain't gonna get into we ain't gonna get into them because I find I find that the majority of blue check Twitter, those are the who are black, are a part of that intersectional crowd. Not all of them, but too many. Gomez stated that another way to provide reparation would be to provide amnesty to illegal immigrants living in the United States. How did How did I know that was gonna be on the table? And I just got finished th through saying that. Grant amnesty to illegal immigrants. Basically, they can come right on in and there they, 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 they will be nothing to tell them to leave. They could just come right on in. Oh, oh you are, are you coming in? Okay, you just come right on in. Just come right on in. You can have this. You can have this. You can have that. And like I said, the scary part about it is this could actually be granted. The very thought of this could actually be granted. And they're not even, they're not even born here. We were born here and we have to still scrape to try to get what is ours and rightfully ours. But they can come in and get any and everything. And if you speak bad about it, they'll consider you a xenophobe 
or whatever phobe they can come with up with at the moment is in the last couple of years they've come up with so many phobias I can't keep count anymore. They have practically bastardized that word. Another is amnesty, a pathway to citizenship for undocumented persons who are here, have not committed violent crimes <clears throat> and can prove that they've been here for a certain amount of time. She said again, we're looking at a different story of anti Latino racism. And so what does that suggest in terms of what we might do as a society to make amends, repair the relationship and bring people into the fold as full fledged Americans? So here's the thing. They have been watching us talk about reparations online for so long that now they are trying to slip in and undercut us and push us to the side. That's why I say do not lump me in with POC. Do not put me in with that black and brown unity because it doesn't exist. Let's hypothetically say they that they got reparations. They're going to go off and be about their day and we're going to get left in the dust yet again. But like I said, you're going to have someone who's like a Kerry Washington going to extend that hand out and open up them arms and welcome the thought. Not realizing it's an insult and it's further pushing you back. I'm tired of being pushed back. I'm trying to push forward. Professors from around the country have commented on the book. Brigham Young University Professor James David Gonzalez wrote that Gomez also reveals the nefarious roles the United States has played in Latin America from military inventions, I'm sorry, interventions in economic exploitation to political interference that taken together have destabilized natu- national ec- economies to send migrants northward over the course of more than a century. It's no coincidence that the vast majority of Latinos migrate from other places from the places most impacted by this nation's dirty deeds, leading Gomez to make a bold call for reparations. OK. But like I said, we were born here and we still haven't gotten what's ours. And we went through 400 plus years of chattel slavery. As far as I'm concerned, and this is not to slight anybody else's plight because every group has gone through something. But let's be real here. The black American in this in, in this nation has gone through the m- most torturous, painful form of oppression, even still to this day, that the world has ever known or ever seen. UC Berkeley law professor Ian Haney Lopez said that Laura Gomez puts racism, colonialism, white dominance and community resistance exactly where they should be at the heart of the conversations about Latinos today and the nature of race in the United States tomorrow. According to Gomez's website, I'm telling you, they are literally biting off of what we have planned for us. But watch they get theirs before we get ours. UCLA, UCLA student Brooke Newman spoke with Campus Reform regarding Gomez's book, saying, I think it's definitely an interesting take on the subject, but adding that I don't really think a lot of people usually think about reparations for Latinos because generally it focuses on the African-American community. So this is a new perspective for me and probably a lot of other people, too. It, and that person actually made a good point when it comes to reparations. That's a topic that usually only focuses on and surrounds around black americans we started the conversation this conversation is ongoing but now to have another group to try to come in and undercut it especially when that group most of them aren't even from here like this woman wants to grant amnesty to illegal immigrants that's literally opening up the floodgates to let any and anyone in here let's say they hypothetically don't have a violent criminal past that will prevent them to come over here what's to stop some of them from doing their dirt while they're here after they get in to the nation and they can't get rid of them and then let's not talk about the jobs that will get snatched i did a whole video talking about war eight in dc and how the whole uh they wanted to hire mexican they did too they hired mexicans that didn't even live in ward eight to do those jobs and went uh, beyond the contract that was put on the documents that said you have to hire people that live in this ward and didn't even do it. All the dirty dealings that they did in order to not give black people those jobs and then have the nerve to call them lazy. That they don't want to work. Black people do want to work, but when you have stuff like that going on behind the scenes that, that people don't talk about or don't know about and mainstream media doesn't talk about, 
it gets frustrating. So those people had to do what they had to do. I also think this book will probably give people a new idea about reparations and what that could look like if it were ever to happen. I guess reparations doesn't always just have to be about giving money to community communities, but it could be something that addresses a particular issue instead, like in this case, amnesty and asylum. Listen, like I said, not to undercut anyone else's plight, but when it comes to the topic of reparations, and I'm going to be completely honest, if any other group wants to have the talk about reparations and a conversation about reparations, they can have it after we get ours. Anybody else that gets theirs, you know, they, they can come. They Listen, you're getting put to the back of the bus. Because as a black man living in America and seeing this history of how black people have been treated and us constantly getting crumbs, I'm tired of crumbs. I'm here for the goddamn full course meal. Everyone else, they can get the scraps as far as I'm concerned. And they can either do it at the kitty table or at the doggy bowl. I don't care. So this woman right here can make the claim all she wants that she wants to do and get reparations for Latinos. That's fine and all. But you wait your turn. This is going to be like the DMV. When you take a number, my number comes up first. Yours can come up whenever and whenever I'm done. And that's the attitude that many black people have to have. We got to stop allowing other groups of people to come in and just kind of sideline us, especially when they weren't even born here and eating off of us. This is our time. Everybody else got to wait. Y'all let me know what y'all think down in the comments.